In this video, let's talk about passing functions as arguments to other functions. It helps us generalize code and make it more reusable. My name is Jose with Teclado, and in this video, we're looking at first class functions in Python. All Python functions are first class, which means they can be assigned to variables or passed as arguments to other functions. Let's jump into the editor and talk about why that can be useful. Also, at the end of this video, I'll show you a great part of the standard library to deal with iterables that makes extensive use of first class functions. So let's say you've got a list of friends and you want to find a specific friend within it. We only have three elements, but you can imagine in a real application, these lists may have thousands of elements. So if we want to find Rolf Smith, well, it's pretty straightforward. You can just iterate over the list. You can say for E in friends, E shorthand for element. You can call this whatever you want. You can say if E name is equal to Rolf Smith, then we'll just print found, for example. Now down here in the terminal, we can just run this code. So I'll say Python 3.9 app.py. You can see we get found. If you want to be fancy, you can extract what you're looking for into some variables so that your code is slightly more reusable. So we can say value is Rolf Smith and key is name. And then you would just replace this. You'd say key is value. So pretty simple and this works in exactly the same way. Now, what if instead of looking for the name to be equal to Rolf Smith, you wanted to find friends that are over 25 years old? So you've got two. Well, now things get slightly more complicated because you have to change three different things. It's not enough to change the value and the name. The value here will become 25 and the name will become age. But you also have to change the loop itself. You have to change this comparison. You'd have to do greater than. And then when you run this, you'd get two founds, one for this one and now one for that one. Because we have to change the loop, it's not as reusable. Now let's instead define a function that takes care of the comparison. So we'll say compare, and this takes in one of these dictionaries and returns whether the dictionary passes or fails the comparison. So here we could say return value of age is greater than 25. When we call the compare function with this dictionary, it will evaluate to false and it will return false. So compare of this will be false. Compare of that will be true and that will be true. So we can get rid of these two variables and we can simply call the compare function passing E as the value that we're comparing. So E is each of the friends, so this dictionary in first place, and we pass it to compare and it returns false. So this returns false and we do not print anything. This will work in exactly the same way. Let me just run it again. You can see we get two founds. Now this is good for a couple of reasons, but the main benefit that we've derived from extracting the comparison into a function is this function encapsulates what it means to be found or to be valid in terms of what we're searching for. So that makes our code a little bit easier to understand. But we can do more. In order to make the search more reusable, and we can maybe call it a few different times for different comparison functions, we can create a search function. And we can put all of this inside it. So now when we call the search function, it will run through the loop. And if we clear that and run, you can see we get two founds again. In order to make this function even more reusable, we should pass to it what it's searching through. So the friends list. So I'm going to give it a sequence and it's going to do for E in sequence. And then when we call the search function, now we need to pass it what it's searching through this sequence. And that's going to be friends. So the friends variable becomes the value of sequence. Now, when we run this, we get exactly the same stuff. Something that you may want to do at this point, because you've extracted your search logic into a function is you could move this into its own separate file, and then you could call it from other places whenever you want to search through a sequence. But what we haven't done is extracted this comparison function. So if we were to extract all of this code and then call search from a different file, it would always be checking whether the age is greater than 25. So that may not be what we want. Let's make this a bit more general and allow this function to take in another function that will return a Boolean. So this will be called key. And this key is the function that we will run. We'll say key of E. Now this here will contain a function 
that is expected to return true or false. That can also be called a predicate. That's often another name for it. And now here we pass the compare function. Now this function here is this compare function and we pass the value of it as key so that it can then be used and called. And it is at that point when we call the function that we go into the body with E as the value and we calculate whether it should be true or false. And you can see this works if we run the app, we get two founds. Now, what's the benefit of this? Well, you can extract the search function into its own file. And there you've defined a function for searching through a sequence based on an arbitrary predicate or key. But you wouldn't extract your friends list, the compare function, or this line here, because this is part of the application you're using. And this function is now a general utility. This is a key use for first class functions. The compare function is a function and we're using it as a first class function by passing it as an argument to another function. And the value of this function becomes the value of this parameter. So this is all well and good, but it seems a bit esoteric, maybe not that useful, but it is actually widely used in the standard library. So let me talk about what I mentioned at the start of this video, which is where it is used in the standard library. And actually, you don't have to define a search function yourself at all because this function already exists in the standard library. Uh, it's called filter. And filter is a function that returns an iterator yielding those items for which the function is true. So you can see it takes in a function and an iterable, and it will run this function for each element of the iterable and yield it if it is true. So exactly what our search function was doing but it's yielding the values instead of printing found. So we'll say that result is equal to the filter of that. And then we can say for E in result and then print E. Now we can run this and you can see we get the two dictionaries. If you try to print result, you're going to get a filter object. If you wanted to get a list of dictionaries, you can simply turn this into a list. And now you get a list with your two dictionaries in it but you can just use the filter object in a loop and that's totally fine and it's more performant. If you wanted to find those friends for which the compare function is false, you don't have to redefine the compare function. You can simply import iter tools, which is part of the standard library. This is iterator tools and it's a great library for dealing with iterables. So we can say not over 25 iter tools dot filter false and again, compare and friends. It takes the same predicate function and the iterable and then will return the friends that are not over 25. So we'll turn this into a list and you can see we get now the other friend that was not over 25. There's a whole bunch of functions in the iter tools library that are really useful, such as filter falls, drop while, take while, star map, and a lot more. I'd recommend checking out the iter tools documentation, which I'm gonna leave linked down below for more information. It's worth getting to know what kind of things exist in that library so that you can use them in your code when they become necessary. Also, if you do coding challenges and stuff like that, oftentimes they can be solved very easily with the iter tools library. That's everything for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new and I'll see you next time.